Get it, like, mate. And now it's a poem called The Mental Health War. It says, actually, two imaginary friends called Francis and John, but it's all part of the mental health battle. Of I reckon it could be sort of multiple personality disorder or something like that. Two young 25-year-olds named John and Francis both got schizophrenia on the same day and in 2009 and are suffering the same source. And their psychiatrist treating them both are so incompetent and the families are supporting the psychiatrist like he has suddenly been made God. John ran himself in front of a bus. Lucky for him, the bus driver stopped before hitting him and drove him to the psych ward and drove him and drove John completely nuts. And Frances kidnapped a 13 year old on her way home from school and was diagnosed with schizophrenia and stayed in the psych ward for three months when, it, when, he, when she seemed fit to re-enter society. While the child's family and the child tried to make her pay for it, they weren't going to break the law to do so. So Frances went back to her house like nothing happened. But his life was a total nightmare as the whole atmosphere changed about the medication they put her on, was giving her delusions that someone was out to get him, get her, and drove her completely crazy. So he told her psychiatrist everything that is happening to her, and she just said that the medication is telling her that her that you have made a serious mistake and you need to know that. You, so he refused to reduce his medication because he can see him slowly healing, but he had to see his parents to try to get him some help to sort out these delusions, like try to find out that if he can creatively get sort out of his mind, get stuff out of his mind. Well, John spent four months in the psych ward because the psychiatrist believes he's in danger to himself and other people. And John was just so distressed about it. In a few weeks' time, Francis was making was real progress with this creative side taking out. All, all of her evil side, the psychiatrist recommended that she try to apply for a job to stop these urges to come back. And Francis spoke to him, to her, to him about what he would like to do. And he said her psychiatrist worked hard to get her a job as an advocate to stand by her, saying, and he has paid her debt to society, and eventually he got a job as a professional cleaner in a, in a professional cleaning firm called Big Group. And he thanked her psychiatrist and he became the big boss. Two years which made him happy. And then the psychiatrist wanted Francis to counsel John, who is having a hard time dealing with his problems. So she arranged mental health to pay for Francis and John to go on a holiday to, to Hawaii to see the big waves and stay in the expenses paid, all expenses paid hotel at the same time. Francis cancelled, counselled John about the purpose of life and after heaps of negative vibes, eventually John realised Francis liked him and they became friends. And Francis, who thought no one would like her for what she did, ended up being wrong. After the, and after the trip was over, Francis said that John was well now and John was released. And instead of, us, of, he, of his usual routine of running out in front of a bus, he got a housing transfer to live near Francis. Because even if Francis had a job, she still cares and that that what matters more, having the a best friend who walks down the same path as you, the end. And that is a little 
sort of story about how how sort of imaginary mates can sort of turn out to be cool and turn out to be very good stories. Like there's a lot of people who do have imaginary mates and of course, you know, sometimes it's probably a good idea to write stories about it. So it doesn't so you can actually get past that to the old stage in your life. Okay, catch you later.